think we should be live, Adam. Hello, everybody. So good to be with you all, as always. We love our Sunday Facebook Lives. It's always a pleasure to be with you. And if you can hear us well, if everything is working, just give us a quick thumbs up or send a little heart so that we know we're on the right track here. And in the meantime, welcome, Adam. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Jochen. It's, uh, I'm excited to be here. So am I, and I received quite a few messages from other people who were excited to hear your, to hear about your story. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the announcement, we will today speak about Adam's discovery of easeful, skillful, and wonderful parenting. Um, so, <laughs> parenting with ease, wonder, and skillfulness, and uh, you know, wrap in any other topics along the way, because of course, parenting is but one of the many relationships we have in life, um, and uh, but such impactful obviously relationships that have a deep impact on on just everything from morning to night and uh, as i have shared with some of you before i i'm not a parent myself so this is an interesting uh discovery for me as well um i i have had the great honor and privilege to be a 10-time uncle so I have gone through some of the stages, and um, but have always been able, after a few hours or even you know, after a couple of days, to say, "Here's your kid." <laughs> it's a very different responsibility uh, than than you know raising raising children. So beautiful to have you with us today, Adam. Thank you for taking the time and. Um, if anybody here joining in today. Uh, I'm happy you're enjoying One Simple Change. Beautiful. Um, so if any of you have questions, just like we just saw here in the in the uh, chat section, in the comments, just pop them in there. We follow them along as we go through the live here, and then um, we'll see if we can integrate it and answer your question. So, Adam, what time in uh, when did you come across the Balanced View training? And maybe you could also just give us a bit of a context, like where were you at in life? What was happening? What were you looking for? And so that we can go from there. Sure. Uh, I came across the Balanced View training uh, about six months after my first son was born. And uh, my son is about to turn seven. So it's been roughly six years. Uh, and uh, it's kind of an interesting backstory. I've been, I've been uh, seeking a long time. I had been seeking a long time, uh, you know, uh, through conventional means and then through totally throwing off conventional means, you know, through kind of rejecting society. I lived in my truck for a while. and. Uh, at some point that it became really clear to me that that wasn't working. So I tried to kind of put my life back together conventionally uh, and <clears throat> had some real challenges. And, and at some point, uh, a few years probably before I met Balanced View, I was sort of on a real, I was on a self-help track, you know, um, I was on the enlightenment track. Uh, uh, lots of self-help books and, and this guru and that guru and, uh, 10 day meditation retreat and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and at some point, you know, it just didn't really feel that sustainable to me to be like meditating for hours a day. Um, and so that kind of fell out of my life uh, with, uh, and uh, along with lots of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. guilt and shame feeling like I, you know, I had failed at another thing. Uh, and so, uh, after my son was born, you know, I, I feel like those couple years before it, I, my son was born and um, I had gotten married and I really kind of put together a conventionally mm -hmm. really pretty solid life. I had a job I, I really liked. I had, you know, I had uh, a wife I loved and I had a house that I thought was really great. And now I had the kid, right? <laughs> so it was like the, <laughs> all the, the boxes ticked. All the all the boxes <laughs> were ticked, and I, you know, I've actually fell into a depression that was similar to you know other depressions I'd had before. I just 
Um, but it was really, it was really hard. I'd felt like I, now I've tried everything, you know, I honestly really felt like now I tried everything. And then <clears throat> when I met the training, I actually, I met it through trying to take up meditation again. I had found this teacher who did, um, who was doing Skype things and I hadn't contacted him yet. Um, but I really liked his message and I, uh, started following, he had a forum where, uh, different students of his were posting and things and it was public. Uh, and so I was following this forum and he had this thing where he had these three gears of meditation or something. And I, I don't need to go into too much detail, but the third gear was basically rest naturally. Um, you know, and, and somebody on the forum said, I don't know how to do that. And someone else on the forum posted this link to a talk with Candace. Uh, and said, mm. you know, check out this talk with Candace and that's how you do it. Right. So I went to try and find it. I couldn't find that specific talk, but then, you know, I landed on balanced view. Uh, so. Wow. What a story, Adam. I've known you for a long time. I haven't heard it in, in that form. That is like, that is wow. So you've really been looking into things like deeply in, 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 in like many directions. Wow. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad a, you I found have, that link. I have a degree in physics, so I didn't mention that, but that was one of the ways that, you know, I was trying to understand reality. Um, mm -hmm. That was one of the first kind of boxes I ticked. Um, you know, I'm going to understand this, the grand unified theory or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, yeah. It, so that was six and a half years ago. And so you already knew the grand theory of physics. You, you had <laughs> exhausted many other like practices and, um, and didn't find them sustainable, as you said, or you hadn't found quite yet what you were looking for. And then you found that video with Candace. Um, what happened next? Like, what did you, was it clear right away or did it take you a bit to like pick it up or no, how, how did yeah, it, it, it took some time and i think that um balanced view in terms of the technology was different then than it is now um and in some ways less accessible um and so at first i just i actually had a kind of a big negative reaction to the talk with candace that i eventually found i didn't understand what she was saying and I just felt really confused, but I, I guess I had enough openness to kind of keep looking around. And I found some trainer talks on the website that really did connect with me, you know, some trainers that I felt like, oh, I know exactly what this person is talking about. I can really, really relate to it. And so for a few months, I just consumed talks, you know, and then I started downloading, um, downloading things and listening to them on my commute and, and, uh, at some point, I think I joined my first call. And at that point, it wasn't, they weren't, there were no video calls. It was just these uh, uh, conference bridges, right? Uh -huh. Where you had to kind of announce yourself. I remember yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the first call I was on, the, the facilitators, the trainers of the call, for some reason, there was a technical glitch. They didn't get on and there was just participants. And I, I, so anyway, <laughs> I joined a clarity call and then eventually I, I, I found a clarity call um, in uh, San Francisco and uh, I really connected with that group. And that was kind of what kept me going. And eventually I did, um, you know, I did the introductory training and I did it was about almost a year by the time I'd done the um, signed up for the empowerments. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did that in uh, 2013, I believe. So. so you really took your time to check this out and like make made an informed decision as you launched into the 12 empowerments. And um, did you notice like some like some practical changes like right away or was it more that you felt like that there was something there, but that you couldn't quite put your finger on maybe or, or how was that for you? Yeah, I don't know if I was like, this is definitely working. It was like nothing else has worked and this is worth a shot. And obviously there was something about it. I was getting some benefit right away. Although at the mm -hmm. time it felt like this isn't working. I don't know. What is this short moments thing? Like it doesn't make any sense. And like, but I, I connected with like when I was watching a trainer talk or when I was listening to somebody, like I, 
I kept going back to that again and again, you know? And so there was something there. There was like these, there's something here that I'm not connecting with yet. And I had enough, I guess, desire and mm -hmm. humility to, you know, give it a shot. And I definitely went into the whole thing extremely skeptical, uh, <laughs> very skeptical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But you saw something there that was compelling enough and you saw some of the results in the people, obviously, that you felt you wanted some of that yes. and that, that, that kept you coming back. It, and then, so after you did the 12 empowerments, how was, how was that for you? Uh, you know, it was, it was, it was similar in that I was like, is this working? Sometimes I felt amazing. Sometimes I felt terrible. Um, you know, I was still kind of caught on, on, on trying to get the right feeling, the right mix of feelings in my life to feel like it was working. But I had some really key insights during the 12 empowerments, um, that like, I still look back on and go, wow, like, I'm really glad I realized that. And one of them, one of them was that, you know, I mentioned the physics and the reason I mentioned that was like one of my key insights was that I'm trying to figure this out. And I feel like once I figure it out, then I'll be happy, you know, then I'll be fulfilled mm -hmm. once I figure this out. And it was like this just constant, like, sometimes I felt like I had it figured out and then I felt great, but then there was a crash, you know, and that was a, that was a really key insight that I had in the 12 empowerments that I was mm. trying to, that was like how I was trying to go about things. And you saw that hamster wheel of like seeking yeah. and, uh, and that, and that it didn't. And I also saw that it actually didn't work. Nobody's figured it out. Right. Like we're still looking for the grand theory of everything. Right. You know, Einstein discovered this, but now we know that that's not entirely true anymore. Right. So it's like this constant, like if you're waiting for the grand, you, you know, for you to understand everything in the way that if, for, if I'm waiting for that, um, for me to understand everything in the way that like my mind happens to work, my brain happens to work right now, then like I'm going to be waiting forever. So it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that really calls for some openness, especially for somebody, you know, who has the kinds of brain that really understands a lot. But to have that, like you said, the humility to really say, wow, this actually, you know, not only is hasn't it worked for me, but obviously nobody has figured that out. So what what are the chances that I'll ever find that happiness and relaxation in the future if that's a condition I put on it. Right. Right. I mean, that, yeah. that that is just like elementary discernment. And I remember a story like when I I asked my coach, therapist slash coach one time, you know, have I, have you figured out what we're working on here for me? <laughs> have you figured that out in your life? And he said, oh, you know, <laughs> actually not. It's like, you know, and like it's like this ongoing and and ever. And and I thought, oh my God, this is like, this is weird. I mean, if if nobody has really solved this, then what are we? It, it's nice to not be in this dilemma myself. Thank you. But <laughs> but if 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 nobody here has found the solution, I need to go elsewhere and, and see if like if, is isn't there anybody anywhere who has found a solution? So that was was basically what inspired me as well to like be more open in my like in the range of of what I what I wanted to 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 test. So um we also have because we shared we would look a bit into your parenting and your yeah. you know your experience being a dad so uh, let's thread that into a little bit the conversation here so um when you discovered balanced view you said you mateo your first son was uh six was months i think right so that means after the empowerments he must have been like one and a half or roughly uh, yeah. going towards the two-year mark um what happened maybe in that relationship until then or you know did you see any changes through the empowerments there as well or were those mostly changes first really relating to your own search and seeking and you know where you would turn or did you already see some like 
changes there? I, How I, did I, that all happen? I think it was mostly me, but what I did see was that, you know, the other thing that I figured out in retrospect, looking at the empowerments and what I, you know, I figured out and I still go back to is recognizing that just putting together the right emotional state, you know, um, doesn't actually bring me any lasting fulfillment um, because it's always changing. And um, I recognized, I think that then if I'm looking to my son to have a certain emotional mix or a certain behavioral mix, for me to feel okay, like I'm a good dad, then like that's a hamster wheel too. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, that was really helpful in terms of my relationship with him. Yeah. You, did you mean for him to have a certain mix of, of emotions or for right. you in having right. them in relation to him or both? Yeah, both. <laughs> yeah, it's both. I mean, I, I think that in my mind, it was really about his emotions, but the reality mm -hmm. is it's about what's internally, you know, internally mm -hmm. so to speak going on for me um but we i have tended to put that on you know on my son or on whoever i'm relating to really is i want to i i noticed in myself that in relationships with people i wanted to feel okay i wanted to be having the right emotions when i'm relating with somebody and i do that by trying to like you know kind of massage the situation say the right thing do the right thing and if they have a negative reaction then I take responsibility for that. And then I, you know, change my behavior accordingly because I'm always trying to do this. I was always trying to do this dance of getting the right emotions for me, the right thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so in relationship with another being, like I try to do that, but with, mm -hmm. uh, with a young person, especially somebody so young, it's just so clear. I mean, there's, there's really, it was really, that was the beauty of it for me, like for, you know, a, a one-year-old, a six-month-old, there's really nothing going on. I mean, they're just like this bright, shining, open, like, just like, you know, they freak out if they need something that they're not getting. But once that's over, it's over. They're not like doing this thing that I had learned to do where I'm just kind of going over and over and over again. Uh, and so, you know, it's a really, for me, it was a really beautiful mirror. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, you know, so... Um, and also the the other uh piece of that is that i think um i like all the parents i've met just really want the best for my kids and mm -hmm. i recognize you know we know that like those first five years are so critical we mm -hmm. know that and that responsibility is heavy mm -hmm. as a parent it feels and i don't always i'm not always in touch with that but like that's going on that that's a responsibility that I've never felt like I've really had before for another being. I mean, this being is totally dependent on me physically, emotionally, psychologically until a certain point, right? They get, I mean, they get less and less so, but uh, those first five years are critical. So I had that motivation too. That was, that was part of what uh, sort of backed me into a corner, so to speak, and, and mm -hmm. fueled my commitment to the, to uh the practice because i did see those results but i also saw like boy i could really mess this up <laughs> you know in a really lasting way and and i want to do my best and i see that uh this training is actually helping me be my best um and really re relate in a loving uh caring way and not manipulative way like where i need him to be a certain way so that i can be feel okay uh, mm. so. Yeah. Well, that is so that is so insightful, you know, that you could see that. I mean, it sounds so simple when you talk about it this way, but I can definitely see, you know, how so often in the thick of every day, I think many people, we, we just aren't aware that this is really what's happening, that ultimately, like you said, we want to be okay and with the responsibility and everything. So we're doing the best we can, but we do this by trying to like keep this being in place in how we think they need to be, which of course with kids, I mean, it's completely, <laughs> I mean, it's impossible with anybody, but yeah. my, <clears throat> my, my youngest nephew is, um, I think seven months now and it is completely amazing. I mean, it's just like from one moment to the other, it could be like from giggling to and then immediately back to the other. And it's just like, if you feel like 
you need to avoid the screaming or something. It's like it would be constant hope and fear of what's going to happen next. And yeah, like, yeah, wow. So how how did he respond to that? Like, I, obviously not by having a philosophical conversation about it because he wasn't even two years old yet. But did you notice any changes that your openness to let him be however he is? Did, did, did you notice something there in the relationship with him? I, I definitely noticed it over the long term. And I still, you know, uh, I don't know if I, I connected with that at that time. You know, I was still very um, caught up in things. I'm not sure I really connected with that at the time, but I think in a very natural and responsive way, like mm -hmm. we have a uh, uh, we have a beautiful relationship. I mean, I can tell you that this relationship that I have with my older son is like totally unique and the the most easeful and loving relationship I've ever had with anybody. Uh, no. You know, and uh, uh, it just continues to then flower. I mean, he's six, he's seven now. He's really gaining some independence. And and uh, I don't know, there's just a warmth that I feel there. It's funny because in the in some ways, in the end, I do get like what I was looking for in relationship was to feel OK. Um, ultimately, I think is looking for this warmth and this 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 generosity and loving kind of reciprocal relationship that's really what i was looking for but i was trying to go about it by kind of manipulating it into place mm -hmm. um and now it's there more and more just because i just totally naturally just honor who he is as a mm -hmm. being and i'm not trying to constantly micromanage his every emotion his every um behavior and so now it's like i mean i just i love being with him you know, it's just like, and, and, and even there's definitely challenges, you know, I'm not trying to paint a picture of like, it's all just <laughs> like this rosy, you know, thing. And there's a totally really intense challenges at times, but like, I really genuinely enjoy being with him, like good times and bad times. And I haven't had a relationship like that in my life prior. Um, and I'm sure that I, I, I'm, well, I'm not sure, but a lot of parents feel that way with their kids, you know, like they have that unique relationship, but I can also see that like, <clears throat> there's so little going on for me. Like, I don't, I'm not relying on that warmth from him. Mm -hmm. Right. It's more like I am recognizing these, this is like the fruit of the practice that I've been doing. This isn't like I've been doing some kind of like, I love my son. I love my son. Like some kind of <laughs> or something like, you know, uh -huh. I, I feel that, you know, it's, this is the fruit, right? It's not something I've actually practiced. That's kind of been the most amazing thing for me in my parenting is that like, I haven't worked on my parenting. I don't work on my parenting. I mean, I, I respond and I have this really genuine relationship, but that's not something I'm doing. I'm not reading a bunch of books about parenting and thinking about if he does this, I'm going to do that. And, it's just totally responsive and this warmth of relationship I think is possible because I've, I think ultimately because I've developed that relationship with myself, you know, before mm -hmm. I didn't feel warm and about myself. I didn't, I, there was so much just criticism and, and negativity and I just couldn't do anything right for myself, you know, and mm -hmm. that's, that's not there. I mean, those thoughts and emotions occasionally do come up still, but it's like, I, I'm, I just kind of laugh them off. Cause it's like, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> you know? Um, and so because of that relationship with myself, I think I'm mm -hmm. able to have this genuine relationship with him. And I have a younger son now too. I have a two year old, which is just like, I, I mean, so amazing. Uh, and, uh, you know, in other relationships, it's been, honestly, it's been more challenging because they're not fresh. There's this history. There's a history mm -hmm. of the way I relate with those people. Um, even if it's a total stranger, it's still like, you know, there's these like, I, you know, I relate with strangers that look like this in this way. And there's that history mm -hmm. there. Um, and with other really, into, you know, really close relationships, there's a lot of history there, both on my part and the other person's part. So 
it can be really challenging. And the beauty for me of having these relationships with my sons is just like, it's just so fresh. And if I mess up, it's like so easy now to just be like, I messed up, <laughs> you know, and so quick. Mm -hmm. Whereas in other relationships, sometimes it's very difficult to get myself back to that, that warmth and lovingness that I, that I want to feel, uh, mm -hmm. that I want to, you know, communicate, that I want to use to serve the relationship. It can be very challenging to get into that space, but with my, with my sons, it's just so, so easy, mm -hmm. which is amazing. I mean, it's powerful what you said there, Adam. Thank you for sharing so just generously. You're your direct experience i've i've uh I, i've really heard what you said that you didn't work on the relationships neither with your sons nor nor generally and, and that it all basically flowers from the relationship that you have today with yourself like basically letting yourself off that hook of having to feel a certain way or think a certain way or, or be a specific idealized somebody then supported you to, to also let your kids be as they are because they didn't need to be any specific way anymore for you to feel the way that you thought that you should feel about yourself. So um, it, it's like that core relationship that you have, that you have with yourself. That is just really beautiful because really um, as, as some of you here know, uh, my wife and I were both psychologists and like, you know, two psychologists being together, obviously we've done like, <laughs> we've done it all. And, um, and, and it's just so beautiful to see that relation, like the best relationship work, so to speak, was to not work on the relationship <laughs> and, and just to let, you know, each, each of us really becoming so grounded in open intelligence in our true nature and to know that, um, that there isn't anything we need from the outside for that. Um, but that everything can just really, um, yeah, flower effortlessly without even trying, without practicing or without retraining, which was what I did before. I like read what it means to be a good husband. I read these books, you know, like the different patterns men have and women have and just how it all, how I can change my behavior and the way I look, the way, what I say, what I don't say. It's not that these, th you know, some of these things are actually useful. So it's, it's not that I would throw them all out of, the window but it's yeah. like trying to live by them as rule books to make like a successful relationship or like a, a whether it's a happy parent or a happy spouse or a happy son whatever it would be it, it would just be adding even more stress more tension more unease more contrivance instead of just having that free-flowing relationship that i can completely see your you're having so that's beautiful um so yeah. that was oh, go ahead please yeah I, I i also want to say like i have no problem with working on a relationship and i think that even within balanced view there's tools for harmonizing relationship i just found for myself uh i had been in like my my way of being was like to figure things out right and so i tend to be super methodical and for whatever reason, well, not for whatever reason, it's really through going with the training and having the support uh, that things were customized to me for me. And it never felt like I needed to do that methodical thing. And I think for others, it might be really beneficial to do something very methodical and go through like a step by step process of working on a certain relationship or a certain challenge in a certain relationship. But I found for me, most of the time, it was really more about letting go of that methodical nature, you know, that methodical, uh, habitually methodical, like analysis and all that stuff that, that mm -hmm. needed to happen for me in particular. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to say that it's not about not working on relationships either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, me. yeah, and, and especially for somebody like you, and I've seen that, you know, with everything I had done, I knew all those things anyway already. I didn't have to analyze it for the fifth time. It, it was more about like the actual changes and um, 
like the first few of the empowerments, as you know, the first like nine empowerments, they are such a perfect, like, I don't even want to say process, but just to, to open up the, a, a clearer, brighter view on what's actually happening. So that for me, some of the changes like to my parents, to my wife, um, to other people that I try to harmonize and perfect the relationship with, it became effortless because it was it was coming from you could say the right place it was coming from like i tried to forgive people before who i felt had harmed me and so i was trying to forgive but still feeling like i don't want to <laughs> or you know thinking i was right or will they harm me or what will happen and so to just let all these changes come about effortlessly um, and like you said, being completely willing to to um, show up in the relationship, to show up fully. So I, um, yeah, I, I can relate can to I, them. May I add? I, I think oh, too. Please. I think a, a key for me, really, um, that is is becoming more and more apparent is that I had trained myself to believe there was something wrong with me, like fundamentally wrong with mm -hmm. me, and then I just naturally saw that in everybody else and now that i see that that's just a load of bs it's a story that i've i've told myself so many times that i believed it and that really actually there's all this you know this this wonder this amazing uh, now that i see that uh, i am not fundamentally flawed which is just this amazing relief i mean <laughs> such an amazing relief that like oh wow there's I, i'm not fundamentally bad um and uh then it's so easy to see that in other people and the 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 beauty for me of having really young kids is that like they haven't really formed all these a, a lot of the habits that uh, it's easy to pin like, okay, you know, if you're seeing people as fundamentally bad or something fundamentally wrong with them, then it's really easy to pin it on like a particular sort of annoying trait that they might have or something. And for really young kids, that's not there. And so just seeing them is so just innately perfect, like uh, without that, that belief system in the way that filter, so to speak of there's something wrong with you has really it it's it's uh it makes it really easy to you know let them be as they are hmm. when they're you know when they're happy when they're sad when they're mad like um that that i can let them be that way and that doesn't mean that i can't take any action it just means that that action isn't coming from feeling like i need them to be that way so that i can be okay I need them to be that way so that uh, I feel like a good person, a good dad. Um, and previously those kinds of things went on all the time, although it wasn't necessarily like I'm telling myself, I need this to happen so I'll feel like a good person. But in retrospect, I can see that. It was like that. an automatic like, yeah. in the background. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I needed to feel I, I needed to feel okay. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Generally, I mean, what we're seeing is when these, even you could say like underlying or that under matter of like hope and fear and like having to shift things so that we can feel okay, well, as long as that's running, it, 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 it can't help but inform decisions that we're making. So, and, and when that phases out, then there is just so much more clarity and really insight because instead of yeah being more busy basically with getting ourselves all right there is just the clear seeing of what's needed in the situation especially for your kids i mean be, be, because they're so responsive at, at least from as i said the little experience that i have in in challenging situations with young children it's so obvious that they're picking up on everything like that's you could say non-verbally or that that's going on with the people around them like they can feel that they can sense that and they respond to that so when there is somebody with them who is just clear and responsive and and doesn't like freak out or or need them to be a certain way that creates such a different space for them to be and to let that resolve for themselves i mean they're i'm sure that they're coping 
so to speak, with with their own thoughts and emotions is very different because they can just, without ever talking about it, pick that up from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I think that's another, you know, really amazing benefit that I've seen is like, I, I talked earlier about that sense of responsibility for doing it right, <laughs> you know, especially in the early years. And, and to actually be able to see that, like, I, not only am, was I always doing my best, but now I have a tool set and like, I really can see both from, from them and, and, and also from other people who have commented on the way that I speak with my children or the way that I relate with my children. I can see that I actually, you know, like they are, they are getting my best, you know, and, um, they're going to have, uh, you know, if it's true that these first five years are so fundamental to the way that things are laid down for them, which makes sense to me. But if that's true, then, you know, I really have done everything I could to um, give them the best opportunity. And that feels great. I mean, it feels great to feel like I've filled that responsibility in, in the best way that I can. Um, and, uh, you know, the evidence is is right there in front of me every time I see my, I mean, my older son woke up a little bit later today. And when he came out of his room, it was just like, I was so happy to see him, <laughs> you know? And I don't think many parents always have that. Like they have it sometimes, but it's, I think it's all very clouded. And to have that, like, I was just genuinely just so happy that he was up and like, I get to spend some time with him. It, you know, it was just, you know, I'm so fortunate that, that that is the circumstance of my life now, which has been brought about through, you know, my commitment to this practice. Um, yeah. Wow. Ah, oh, I need my tissues. <laughs> that is so beautiful, Adam. I, I love it. I really love it. We, we should meet again in a couple of years and see how, how they're both doing and, 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 and how you're doing. This is so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Adam, so much for, for being available. I see we're a good way into our time here. So um, I haven't even looked at all the comments here, but I think those were mostly highs from other excited parents who were saying hello. Um, we've come to the end of our time here, but uh, if anybody has any further questions, we'll be around as usual for a little while to answer any comments. So just post them there um, in the, you know, below the talk. And Adam, thank you again so much for being here. If anybody watching today, if you have been around for some time and this triggered some questions for you, maybe some of the things Adam shared were compelling or magnetizing and you're wondering how you could have this experience that Adam was sharing about today in your life, whether with your children or also with other people in your life. Um, we're offering a 45 minute breakthrough calls. They're free in which we basically really want to look at your life together and see what's working currently, what's currently not working and how are you currently addressing the things that aren't working. And then we'll be happy to give you our feedback and just see, you know, is there anything that we could suggest that could support you to come closer to the way that you actually want to live and in relation to our topic today, relate with other people. So we're posting that link to apply for that call um, below in the comment section as well. Our team is usually right on the case there, so that should pop up there. Um, and we'd love to meet you. So just feel free to book a call there. And otherwise, I'll see you again either in the Bright group or in our next Facebook Live interview here. Adam, thank you so much for taking the time. This was just fantastic. I loved every bit you shared. Thank you for sharing so openly also and really, really personally. That was just so much fun. Yeah, thank you, Jochen. It was, uh, it was really uh, a pleasure to be here and to share. Thank you. Beautiful. Take care, friends. Bye, everybody.